a crazy chicken plucker named Darren With no tattoos, freckles only bare and staring Down the microphone, Darren Carter will tickle your funny bone With a ho, ho, ho and a ha, ha laugh Tune in and listen on the Pocket Party Podcast Pocket Party And we're back, hey everybody, it's your host Darren Carter, the party starter And today we will be calling my good buddy, Mr. Mike Black And uh, I'm calling from my hotel in El Paso, Texas. Pocket Party Podcast. It's my favorite podcast. The Party Party Podcast. Let's see if he answers. Uh, okay, we have him. Uh, I hope he answers. Hey, is this Darren Carter? <laughs> yes, it is indeed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, live from where do you live? Well, right now I'm in a hotel in El Paso, Texas. Live from scenic El Paso, Texas, the party starter himself, Darren Carter. Yeah. Well, this is like a reverse engineering podcast, and now I'm on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I tricked you. You tricked me, dang it. <laughs> yeah. It's the friends in your pocket. It's a pocket party in your pocket. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now the pockets have turned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My podcast is in the front, and yours can be wherever you want it. The back pocket. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> yeah. That's what you should be. You should do an after show. After oh, I podcast. like that. Yeah, I was, it was, I was like a, a little ten-minute show called the back pocket. The back pocket. I was trying to go with that mullet idea, you know, like party business in the front, party in the back. But I like that. <laughs> you don't want the business podcast, with <laughs> yeah. Derek Carter. Oh god, nobody wants to hear that. I know exactly, especially for me. Like, well, I've never gone to business school. I went to community college. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I have no business doing that. I do show business. Show business, folks. Yeah. I don't know what crypto is. <laughs> yeah, but I, is it a gang in Compton? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Bow wow, Long Beach. What's up, crypto? Cryptocurrency. Yeah. I would be afraid of a game, a gang called the Cryptos. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know. Sounds terrifying. <laughs> I know. So let me paint a picture of where I'm at. I'm. Have you have you ever played the comic strip in El Paso? Uh, I don't think I've been to El Paso. Oh, El, okay. So I love El Paso because it's barely Texas. Like you just, it's a short <laughs> flight. You're, you're not really, it just, you know what I mean? Like you're, it's, it, it, you're definitely in Texas, but you're like, you're just here. You're, you're here. Next thing you know, you're on a plane, you're back in Phoenix, you're back in LA, or if you take, take a direct flight, you're, you know, it's even faster. But, and this, yeah. this, this particular club is, um, you, you know, you land at the you land at the El Paso airport, and then you take. What a, is the club, or do you not want to? Oh no, it's called to... it's called the Comic Strip, the Comic Strip in El Paso. No. Oh right, you said it already. Yeah, they're great, and and it's uh, he's changed locations like you know, over the years, but right now he's near the airport, and in fact, it's so close to the airport. When you land, you literally just call the hotel. The shuttle picks you up in ten minutes, which normally you're like, I don't want to take a shuttle, but it's like painless. It's like. You know, yeah. I mean, you could walk to the hotel if you if you wanted to walk like two miles or whatever. But um, I know when I was doing the road, I never wanted to take the shuttle, but I was a feature act, so you're taking the <laughs> shuttle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's like totally. I know. It's so funny because I was I just saw some comic had posted something. Uh, he was like, "When you get the good gigs, they send a car for you," and I'm like, "Yes, I love it when that's happened. When they send a, a car, like a town car, yeah, with your name on it and." You know, that's cool. But although sometimes I feel the obligation to talk to the driver and, and I like it when they're cool with you not talking, when they're like, you know, like they're like, hey, you know, I'll, I'll even tell them like if they're not, you know what I mean? Like I'll be like, hey, I got to catch up on some stuff. Go ahead and, you know, play your radio and uh, and, and like I'm friendly and everything, but I, I just want to maybe just sleep or something because I've been flying all day or whatever. I Sometimes I was friendly. Sometimes I would play a game where I would pretend it was my first time in a car like that. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I would just keep asking if different things were free. <laughs> Is this free? This magazine? Can I take this? I, I, I guess <laughs> these yeah. chips. I can take these to my to my room. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, I, remember... I just load up all the stuff that they had, oh, th and then I would like when they weren't looking, I would put it back, <laughs> and then I would tip them when we got there. <laughs> when I would do Lake Tahoe for the improv. They would, uh, you'd fly into Reno and there, it was like about an hour long 
ride and, and they'd pick you up in a stretch limo from the casino, which always seemed <laughs> kind of weird because it's like, you know, you're like Tahoe, like the higher you get the elevation, the, the, it's like a lot of snow. And you're like, is this the safest route for a, you know, <laughs> like a stretch yeah. limo during a, you know, snowstorm? I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, you just got to try and it'd be windy. Like sometimes they go when it's windy and. One time I was there, and they actually had like a tornado that touched down at Lake Tahoe, and I was like, "What the heck? I'm in this stretch oh, limo." Man. Like, but yeah, it does feel pretty fancy. You know, that would but, be the the best way to die if you had to die. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Would be taken away in a twister in a stretch, <laughs> in a stretch limo. limo. Yeah, on the way to a gig. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, the last time we saw him, he was getting uh, spirited away by a tornado in a stretch <laughs> limo. You're not going to top that. That's the best death yeah. of all yeah. time. Isn't Ladies it? and gentlemen, Elvis has left the building. <laughs> yeah. The only way it'd be better, we saw two models get into the limo right before, and uh, they yeah. all just went whirling up into the sky. <laughs> yeah. I know. There'd be a country song, you know, uh, about it and stuff. You know? <laughs> Almost like that rider. No, no, I'm thinking of Riders on the Storm with Johnny. With, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's a fitting song. Riders on the Storm. The stretch limo is porn. I don't know. I've, I've no. I'm and not, then you guys uh, land on a witch in yeah, Oz. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh, I'm thinking of that Johnny Cass song, "Ghost Riders in the Sky." That's what it was. Yeah. He did, Riders he did. on the Storm makes more sense. Oh yeah, then Ghost Riders in the Sky with a stretch limo. Yeah. <laughs> the legend. Yeah, I like it though. But yeah, so anyways, this is like a shuttle, and. uh the guy was pretty cool. It was just a, it's just one. It was basically a van. It was a van and like the just the one guy that works at the hotel, multiple jobs. I think he's also the mechanic and the the maintenance <laughs> yeah. guy and the you know that kind. Of, by the way, that happened to me once when I was on, I was at a club in the Bay Area, and I remember the guy would take you back and forth from the club to the hotel, and uh, I remember like it was so embarrassing because you know it's a limousine that was set up by the hotel. Like the, it's a, it's a I mean it's a, it's a limousine, but it has the name of the hotel on the door, so it is a limo, but it's still the comfort in stretch limo or whatever it would be. And uh, yeah, it should say technically a limo. On it. Yeah. <laughs> technically it is. Yeah, exactly. He has to have a license. Legally for... we're allowed to call this a limo. <laughs> but I just remember the guy, he, uh, you know, he was making me feel good. Like he's like, yeah, I've seen your comedy before. And, Oh, I love that club. You know, I don't know if he had or not, but he just was, you know, is that kind of thing. Like you're making you feel like you're, you know, I'm a star kind of a big star from Hollywood. Yes. Yeah. But I, but he was also the maintenance guy. So I remember the embarrassing part was <laughs> the toilet had, um, you know, I had to call and get the toilet plunged. And he was the same guy that did it, and it was kind of like, Ew, like this is weird." <laughs> yes, I'm the big star. Yeah, no one, no one is that big a fan of your comedy that they want to plunge your toilet. <laughs> exactly, I know. I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is embarrassing." Like, but I thought, "Yeah, whatever." It's, it'd be worse if it was like a female that came up and did that. Like, I would, I would love, I would love to meet Steve Martin. Yeah. <laughs> But if he called and was like, I was hoping you could come by and uh, unclog my toilet, I, I'm going to have to pass. Mr. Ryan, as much as I love your comedy. I know. You're like, you're, you're cool with like driving him from the, you know, like back and forth to <laughs> yeah. the gigs and stuff. Sure. Like, he's like, yeah. can you unclog my toilet? Like, oh, wow. You're a wild and crazy guy. <laughs> yeah. That's a, well, too wild and crazy if you want me to come over yeah. and unclog your toilet. Yeah. <laughs> So, so in El Paso, the first thing I noticed is uh, we were at a stoplight, and the car in front of us had a giant like decal right across the, the rear bumper, and it said, if you got any closer to my ass, pull my hair and make me feel good. <laughs> I was That's like, tough. wow. All right, right out the gate with the vulgar bumper stickers. Welcome to El Paso. <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, yeah. There's a lot of people uh, dodging the law in El Paso. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm going to expect to see a bunch of that, you know. I'll, I'll, I'm going to post that photo after uh, after this episode goes up, so people will see it. That I uh, I did see. Oh no, I think I took a video of it. Yeah, I actually took a video. And um, the shuttle guy didn't know that I was. I don't think he knew I was a comedian at that point. He just thought I was like uh -huh. a guy staying at the hotel. So I wonder what he was thinking. Is I'm like, oh, okay, oh, I go. Uh, I'm going to film this real quick. And so I'm filming, and he's probably thinking, God, this guy's a creep. Like, yeah, I was like, what a weirdo. <laughs> what a weirdo. He wants to document this. This is, <laughs> this is my vacation. He's gonna, gonna ask me to pull over for sex. Exactly. He's gonna say, "Hey, can you re rent that car, please?" And he's gonna want to film it. He's gonna film it. Can we pull their hair? Who's driving? 
Then he's going to ask me if these pretzels are free. <laughs> are these pretzels free? No, but this is the normal, the regular hotel that we stay at. Um, they uh, they were closed down for almost a year. Now they're reopening next week. And apparently they, they were housing uh, like illegals or whatever, or refugees or mm-hmm. however you want to say it. Like the, the way, Guests of the country. Yeah, guests. The, the, the shuttle guy made it sound like they were in trouble because I go, yeah, normally we stay at the other. And he's like, he's like, oh, yeah, the government shut it down. I go, why? Why'd they shut it down? I'm thinking some kind of like you know, meth lab or maybe it was gross or so. Because I remember I used to like staying there. I mean, it wasn't like a top level hotel by any means, but he's like, yeah, yeah, they had, they had illegals over there. But he was saying it more like, like just matter of fact, like he wasn't, but I was just reading into it like, oh man, that's, that's crazy. Hey, well, that, that could have been any number of things. They could have not known they had illegals there. <laughs> yeah, but then I found out the you rest know? of the story because I they said that, that apparently like uh, it was like a government program. That's where they were housing the quote unquote illegals, and uh, and it's so. Funny. Oh well, that's yeah. like yeah. not to get all political, but a lot of the different government programs have they just stopped doing. Uh, they're like you know everything's better now, so <laughs> we'll, <laughs> right. We'll Stop doing all these uh, programs that help people. They, uh, it was kind of funny because my buddy and I went there. He's a, he's from the south. I don't know. Do you know Brian Swinehart? Swine time. I, I do. Yeah, it's, it's a hard name to forget. Yeah, Brian Swinehart. He used to book uh, three of clubs and sometimes the Empire. So I think he left Ohio and now he's in Florida. And uh, so we, we like that gym over there because they have a better gym than the one we're at. And so and they have this courtyard. And I, and I was like, you know what? I want to get some vitamin D, just a little bit, like 20 minutes, just some sun. So we went into the courtyard. We actually walked in through the hotel, went to the mm-hmm. courtyard, but then the courtyard is surrounded by three buildings and, a, and a, like about a five-foot wall. And the minute you go into the courtyard, you need a key to get back in. So we, <laughs> so we, were, we were trapped. And um, I was like, well, let's, let's just jump rope and we'll figure it out later. And then a couple of times I did see like housekeeping. You know, if we wanted to stop working out, we could just like, you know, hey, excuse us, can you hold that door open? But uh, it was kind of funny because we were out there, and, and I told the story on stage. I was like, "We're out there," and it's hard to imagine you and Brian Swinehart jump roping together. <laughs> no, it was competitive. I have this uh, this jump rope that has like competitive an od- jump roping. <laughs> it has like an odometer on it, so like every time you turn the rope, it counts at like one, two, three, four. So we were trying to see how many turns we could get in a two minute period, and uh, I, I had the record the first day I had two hundred and eighty, but then he got up to two hundred ninety six. Oh no! I know he's like, we should film this. And I'm like, I don't know. Do people really want to watch this? I don't. I have to edit. I, yeah, I could answer that for you. Uh, you're saying yes? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah, they might want to watch it for 30 seconds. Like, okay, I see it. I get the idea. No one's gonna watch. I'm it. morbidly curious about <laughs> yeah. it. I know. But, Maybe I'll. Yeah. Only because it was the two of you. Uh, Brian Swidehart was an excellent writer. I remember that. Yeah, uh, some really really good jokes. He, he does, man. He's out there and he's doing it. But it was funny because we were out there doing that thing. And then, and, uh, and so I was telling the story on stage here in El Paso. We're, we're right here on the border. And, uh, and we're like, you know, as we got into the courtyard and we're doing our thing, and we got locked in. And, and uh, we're like, man, wouldn't that be crazy if like somebody called the front desk? Yeah, um, I see two white guys down there illegally. <laughs> illegally <laughs> jump rope. Yeah, they broke into the hotel. Yeah, and to get out of the hotel. So what we did is we, we it was funny because I go, I go, I guess we got to jump over that five foot wall and, and Brian was like, "Well, we won't be the first <laughs> at this hotel." So, what if you, what if you guys were the illegals that got it shut down? I know exactly. Yeah, <laughs> the, uh, the, we were fine with all these people staying here, but now that there's, there's these guys jump roping outside, it's creeping everyone out. I know enough of the you know, the shirts are off. They're trying to get some vitamin D for 20 minutes. What's <laughs> There, I know because I did think about the the trespassing, the no trespassing. But then I was like, well, you know, this they, somebody had told us that the hotel that we're at now, like they're the same parent company. So I was going to be like, <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, listen, if you know, it's not that bad, you know, it's not like we stole anything. We basically just went there to jump rope and use the use the sun. <laughs> Officer, please, please, please. <laughs> but this drop, is drop the weapon. The, the <laughs> exactly, <jump rope? laughs> I know. Stop jumping rope. There's a, uh, it's funny, like, you know, there's ways that I like to rate a, a, a road experience. And this is a pretty good one because, you know, like I said, it's so close to the airport and you're so close to the gig. You don't really need to rent a car. So why would yeah. you? So uh-huh. this has everything you need. Like if you, 
the first day I go, there's a gas station that has like bottled water. So I'm, I got my water at the end of the hotel uh, parking lot. There's a Starbucks. So I got my coffee. Uh-huh. If you go up the street, there's a uh, place called Corner Bakery. It's like a chain restaurant. I've heard so of every, them, yeah. yeah, every day I've been eating at Corner Bakery and a couple times. What is your favorite dish that you've had at Corner Bakery? You know, it's I, uh, I today today my my I don't know the name of it, but I got some delicious pasta. It was like chicken and pasta, and they had peas. oh the one that has uh, peas in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah, it had the peas in there. That's yeah. my favorite thing there. That it, was so it, good. I. I want to say chicken carbonara. That's it. That's it. That is it. Yeah. Oh, man. That's My, so cool. Uh, uh, Runner-up, though. Yeah. The very simple, light meal. Uh, the tomato basil soup. Ooh, I should have got that. It's scalding hot. Wow. Just for, be forewarned. Uh, let it sit for a moment. But I'll get that in a sandwich, and you, you feel like a million bucks after you have that. Oh, you really do, right? Because, I mean, like this area is not the worst area and it's not the best area. Like you do see random, like a different type of homeless person here. Like, I don't know what they're, usually they have like an army bag and they looks and they just keep to themselves. They might be, this one guy had some headphones and he was rocking back and forth. Looks like he was on some sort of drug or something or. And I, we have the most proactive homeless here in LA. So I, I'm holding him to a different standard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. The homeless here more look more like uh, like like a traveling hobo type of person, you know. Like they're just yeah they hit hit the open range of Texas and America or whatever. But yeah, so when you go there, you do feel like you're at a nice place. You're like, all right, I'm at this upscale restaurant. It's uh, I feel like a million bucks. I had that. Did I tell you the yeah. the craziest homeless thing that happened to me yesterday? Oh no, what? This was just yesterday, and I I called Stephen Glickman because I knew he'd be <laughs> up. Yeah. To, I was like, you're not going to believe this. I There is a Panda Express near me that is open till 2 in the morning. I had a busy day. I didn't get out of the house till midnight. So I was like, I'm going to go to Panda Express, get some takeout and take it with me. And I got, it was, unfortunately, it was at the time of the night where it's just like, this is what we got left oh. from, from these things. Yeah. And so most of the stuff that I got, I wasn't wild about but i was like this will be good enough you know but luckily the my least favorite thing was on the top of the little pile of boxes that i had to make to go back to my car yeah and something caught my eye and i like shifted my weight a little bit and the top box goes rolling (laughs) down the other boxes oh no and falls to the ground and i didn't notice him until he made a noise <clears throat> but there was a homeless guy with a target cart first of all not a target for miles yeah <laughs> he had a target cart that had a blanket over the top of it he points at the food on the ground and goes <laughs> yeah <laughs> score and, and i just kind of was like <laughs> okay. Like, like I'm not going to fight him for it or anything, you know? Right, yeah. But what I didn't realize was that, <laughs> yeah, was a command. The cart starts to shake a little bit. The flap comes off <laughs> the top of oh, it. Oh, man. Two little dogs jump out of the cart, and they go and snatch the little bag of food wow. and bring it back to him. And they're prouder than hell. They're like, we did it. We're, we're going to yeah. eat. But the, the sad part was then they tried to jump back into position into the cart, but they were too small to make it. So he <laughs> had to like load them back in. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and so yeah. I, was, I was like, yeah, just keep it. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? Ask me, hey, can I get that bag? Hey, yeah. Doggy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can you send the dogs this way? <laughs> what do you think it was? Do you know exactly what it was? The small box? Oh, the small box. It was um, beef broccoli. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. I, I like, but they put, their ratio is way off. It's like 90% broccoli. Yeah. It's a little uh, bit of, they did not, the, the homeless guy and his dogs did not eat really well because they got that. Like, <laughs> you know, know. They, they did okay, but not like super, super well. That's funny. 
When you said I, I was tempted to leave him another box, but then I wouldn't have uh, enough to eat. Right. You know, so. Gosh, it's and a... I care about me. <laughs> exactly. You're, so you're, I got you're, in the car and yeah. drove away. Especially when you've been in the house all day and you're looking forward to something and you're like, well, that's that'll be open. It's open until 2. I'll get there before it closes. And Right. They, uh, so, yeah, I got that today at, at, at Corner Bakery, but but I have in the uh, this week been getting like a panini. Uh, I, f- I think it might have been like a chicken panini. I, f- I don't know the, t- the kind it is. But yeah, they do good uh, pressed sandwiches. Yeah, there. it was so good. I got that, and I got like that, that healthy power green salad. I would get that because I'm like, well. They I'm do gonna... a lot of stuff. I just, you know, I'm, I'm saying a lot of nice things about this place. They ought to send us uh, coupons or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, they do a lot of things that – if you were to tell me the ingredients separately, I wouldn't want it. Right. They're like, this has a, a lot of uh, mustard seeds and uh, kale yeah, and yeah. Uh, basil and a, a big weird slice of tomato, a little bit of turkey and some, uh, some uh, aioli sauce. Mm. And then we put it all on bread and smush it together and toast it. Yeah. If someone described that to me, I'd be like, well, look, if you don't want me to eat here, just say so. Yeah. I don't want to eat all these gross things. That sounds gross. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but then when you get it, you're like, oh, this is actually really great. <laughs> That's right. And they, I had some kind of, I think it's called Orzo Soup or something. Zorro? Orzo? Zorro Soup. Yeah. Fam- the famous uh, masked marauder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, who, who actually, I believe, uh, liberated El Paso. Single-handedly <laughs> with his sword. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I was he so... was known for he would carve a Z into things, and that was the mark of Zorro. The mark of Zorro. I know that's cool to have like a thing like it, Z. Antonio Banderas did a whole movie about it. It was, it was a true story. I really wanted to go to Dominguez Mexican Restaurant today, and I walked all the way there, and they were closed on Sunday. And I'm like, dang it! So that's that's why I I was like, well, I'll do the I'll go to Corner Bakery again. I'll get you, you know, know, you can call places now. I just thought they would be open. I mean, on a Sunday, and they'll tell you if, if they're open or not. I know. Oh, you know what? They were closed, and then I saw this, and I and I, that my my uh, as I was walking toward that that um. Corner Bakery, there's a place called, you know, there was a Chick-fil-A, and in the, mar- I didn't really want Chick-fil-A, but the marquee said, we now have piping hot tortilla soup, and it's really cold here right now. Not um, on Sunday, they don't. I know, I, that's another thing. I was like, oh, they're closed also. I mean, I kind of realized that in about three steps when I realized, like, oh, there's nobody in the parking lot, but. I, one time, <laughs> was in an airport <laughs> doing the road, and I was coming one way down the, the terminal, and what I, what I can best describe as me but black was coming the opposite way. <laughs> he was like wearing the same nerdy t-shirt. He looked just like me. Yeah. He was me but black, basically. And we both saw the Chick-fil-A sign at the exact same time. We were like mirroring each other all the way down <laughs> yeah. in every possible way. And then uh, we both see the Chick-fil-A sign at the same time. And we kind of like our eyes lit up and we looked at each other like, yeah, you know, and we both (laughs) start running towards it. But he was just a little bit faster. And then I saw all the hope die in his eyes. And he goes, oh, no. It's Sunday. And I, I, what I said was, oh, is it Sunday? And he goes, and he just nodded his head in defeat. And I was like, oh, man. (laughs) And then we both just (laughs) sadly kept walking the directions we were going. And then we passed each other in failure right in front of Chick-fil-A. Oh, that's hilarious. Do you you ever eat breakfast at Chick-fil-A? I never never really have. I don't have the courage. First of all, I'm never up uh, in time for breakfast at places. And they get mad if you want it later. You know, but um, I do like the idea of those uh, chicken biscuit sandwiches where it's like one of those uh, buttermilk biscuits Ooh, with yeah. a, a little tiny Chick-fil-A inside it. Mm. Those sound really good, but I'm and I'm sure I would enjoy one for breakfast, but I'm never up. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll stay up all night if I'm really motivated. <laughs> yeah. And go to a place and have like a late dinner breakfast sort of situation do you do a ho- do you do the hotel breakfast or do you sleep in i always choose to sleep in if it's if it's free i do the hotel breakfast i'll, I'll wake up eat it then go back to bed 
Oh wow! Uh, yeah, because I, I the the feature act uh, he he's been doing that, but it, he doesn't make it sound very appealing. It's like it's just you know yogurt. And, yeah, yeah. The feature like, act mm. has a lot of hard choices to make, and that that's one of the. He's <laughs> yeah. getting paid like sixty dollars a set, maybe. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so, it, it's barely covering the the trip, you know. Uh, right, yeah. If I was featuring so, yeah, you, right, I'd probably be like, "Hey, that's a free breakfast," and yeah, because yeah, I'm, any I'm, offer of free food, you kind of better take it you know you know what i've learned to travel with um my own food at least so i'm not starving like i'll bring a like right now i'm looking at a bag of all i got a bag of um, almonds with some sea salt in them lightly salted i got another little uh something i got from whole foods like some trail mix with a little bit of peanut butter chips in there so it's delicious it's healthy but then you got something that's kind of like a treat and then uh yeah we walked down to walmart the other day and i bought a little bag of uh Mandarin, so I got like some sort of you know like vitamin C and and just so I have something because I don't. The worst feeling is when everything's shut down, there's nothing to eat, and then you're screwed, and you're like, oh my gosh, I guess. Uh, yeah, a lot of towns just shut down earlier than you would think. Like, you know, like Cleveland, is it, their big thing. Cleveland rocks. Yeah. Not after seven p.m. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. It shuts down. Like they shut down like they think vampires are coming. Right, and that's uh, like, like yeah. it, it, as soon as the sun is gone, you see like windows shutting and doors. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. People lock up. You know, it's like, what the hell do you think happens here at night? Especially when you take the the you know the take not having a car you know in the equation, it's like you know yeah yeah. I mean, if you have a rental car, you're like, okay, I'll find something. It might be ten miles away, but if you're just within walking distance, it's like, let me just have something so I'm not like. Yeah, I could. I would get it if it was like downtown Detroit, and they all the all the businesses stop at seven o'clock sharp. But yeah, fr- yeah. Freaking Cleveland. I know, I know, man. I was so looking forward to Mexican food, man. I was like, I'm in Texas, and there was a a, a guy that was going to take us around yesterday, and I go, hey, we'll vlog El Paso. Well, and then he canceled at the last minute, which is okay. But still, I was like, ah, and then we'll do it on Sunday, and then that was closed. I'm like, ah, man, I guess I'll just. Uh, Make so, up. wait, you haven't had any Mexican food? No, I know. I feel like an idiot because, you know, the first couple of days I'm like, okay, I'll do the salads in the corner bakery and then I'll really treat myself on the weekend. And then neither well, one of them. Well, you know, they're, they're world renowned for their uh, store bought salsa. Their store bought salsa? <laughs> oh, El Paso. Old, old, oh, yeah. Yeah. Old yeah. El Paso. yeah. New get, York get yourself City. yourself a can of that while you're there. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> it's, it's practically. The, the best thing in town. You know what's funny, man, about when you're out here, you you know, the first day you sort of see like, oh, a lot of people dress different. And then by the fourth day, you're like, hey, those Western shirts look kind of cool. And then, then you're like, maybe I should get a pair of those boots. And then you realize you're going to you're gonna buy all the cowboy gear and then go back home and be like, yeah. it's like a costume or something. You're not, <laughs> well, you have, a, you have a ranch. You could pull that stuff yeah, off. Yeah, I could. I got a couple of those shirts I've worn in the past with the pearl buttons, but they snap. Really, and, I, and, you know, I... I like just, a rhinestone cow. Yeah. I just have to really, you know, watch what I wear because uh, I definitely have that howdy doody look about me. And then, well, uh, yeah, you can for it, sure. Yeah, and it's like, you know, if the belly gets a little big, then I, I just, I don't want to look like a washed up country singer. That's like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> I remember for yeah. back during the Garth Brooks era. Yeah, I was in high school in Colorado he was like really had crossed over big and half the kids I knew dressed like him oh, and wow. you know, like the full thing, cowboy boots and stuff. Like they just stepped off a ranch. I was like, yeah. we're about as landlocked as it gets. We're in the <laughs> middle of Colorado. The, yeah. You know, there may be a few farms up near the mountains, but there's <laughs> nothing anywhere nearby that <laughs> warrants this type of outfit. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. In Fresno, you know what they would do? They would uh, so back in the '80s when I was growing up, like punk rock was becoming popular, the surf music, that whole scene, new wave music, yeah. and, and a lot of the kids would wear like, you know, like the surf clothes, like the Vans, and they'd have like you know sex wax or whatever like that, and they have the, the yeah. shirts. But on top of it, a few of the kids they actually had uh, surfboards tied to the roof of their car. <laughs> yeah, like I guess just, to just com- for the look. I guess because we you know talk about landlocked. You know, I mean, you're not really surfing Millerton Lake. You're probably, you know, <laughs> I mean, your closest is like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah, the, yeah, yeah, like a three. Oh yeah, drive. it was very much. It was the same in Colorado, but they would uh, 
instead of putting surfboards on the cars, they would put snowboards oh, on that's the. Funny. And it's like, it doesn't really need to go up there. It'll yeah. fit inside yeah. the vehicle. Yeah. Like it not it, it with not a lot of effort. Either. You can put it in the trunk, and it'll be fine. I got a uh, somebody sent me a, uh, a a Western type of shirt, and it's really really cool. It's uh. But I'm I'm only gonna, I only wear it on special occasions. In fact, I think I've only worn it twice, and it's it's uh it's an Elvis shirt. Like somebody had taken the time to put Elvis's image like on the sleeves and on the back, and then and it says like Heartbreak Hotel. It's embroidered and it looks I've really, seen those. yeah, it looks super cool. But it's also I got to you know it's one of those things. It's very memorable, so you can't really you know you don't want to be wearing it like three times a week or anything. <laughs> Well, no, yeah, <laughs> that's that's kind of with any shirt, Darren. You know, yeah. really. Well, wanna... well, no, I know, but see, I have several like black solid <laughs> T-shirts or blue, so they kind of, you know what I mean? Like they're clean, but like you don't really stand yeah. out. But like it's like if you wore a tuxedo and you don't want to be the, you know, one day you're wearing a tuxedo, the next day you're wearing like cargo shorts, and then you're back in the tuxedo again. Uh, why not? I guess you know, as I said it out loud, I'm like that would be. Who cares? There's no rules. <laughs> It just makes people think you lead a robust life. That yeah. you know, you, you, sometimes he needs a tuxedo, sometimes he needs cargo shorts. Yeah, this guy's like James Bond. <laughs> yeah, and the wild thing is, is I own the tux and I rent the cargo shorts. <laughs> <laughs> that is wild. <laughs> I wonder if Mike Black's available to unclog my toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Johnny. <laughs> Hey Steve, <laughs> can't you get Ed McMahon to do it like normal? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are correct. Yeah. That would that could, that could be a. You game really show. did a number on this plumbing, oh great one! <laughs> you you yes. did a number. That's funny. Uh, what is clogged? Number one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's up, guys? How you like the show so far? Pretty good, right? Kind of weird that I'm out here in the country with the chair next to me but anyways if you like this show and you want to help out go to cameo i do birthday shout outs anniversary shout outs or if you just want to do a donation go to darrencarter.com paypal or venmo at darren carter comic now let's get back to the show oh my gosh so what else is happening man so i'm on i'm at the hotel i got my uh like i said i got my coffee i got all the anemones is that the word anemones yeah, I got everything here. Amenities, amenities. Yeah, the road is great because it's like you just have one goal, and that's like the show that night, and you don't have to pick up dry <laughs> cleaning. You don't have to, you know. There's no, you're just home. You're just. <laughs> what I love is what a sweet, innocent comedian you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you're on the road as a comedian. You just have one goal in my head. I'm thinking, get a bunch of cocaine. <laughs> and exactly. you're like, do a yeah. great show. Oh yeah, that too. Oh, let's, that let's too. Do a great show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. You're right. There is that too because there was the the one guy that was going to give us the tour of uh, El Paso. He did throw yeah. he did throw it in the mix where he's like uh, he did. He did mention, hey, if you want to go to Juarez, man, I'm really, you know, I, I can take you guys across the border. And and then some of the waitresses are like, oh, yeah, Sam knows everybody. Like, they all know Sam. And, you know, he's, yeah. a, he's a bilingual comedian. So I guess he's been doing stand-up comedy gigs down there. And and uh, yeah. I was just like, I don't know. Something could go wrong. You don't want to go like, across the border anymore. It's not like yeah, Bohoya in the old days. I know, it's, right? Like, what if I get down there, then I try to cross back, and then they're like, oh, you got to take a negative test i don't know just it could be yeah or even the well even even before that it was like someone will just steal your passport over there i know i know even yeah yeah, because i was here like i remember like five or six years ago they were telling us all these scary stories of you know they would do stuff you know yeah real yeah yeah they said like some these guys uh, they would do like sand dune racing or something like down here somewhere and then um, (laughs) i guess like the cartel pulled up and then the, the only way that they they knew that one of the drivers was their enemy, according to these people telling me the story, and the, the only clue they knew about the the guy is that he walked with the limp. So they made each driver walk, and, and then walk back to the car, and so, and we were just saying how scary that would be. And luckily, I, apparently, none of them had that limp. So then they the cartel got off yeah. and like took off. But like that's scary, man. Like, but they could have easily just shot them all too, you know. I know. Uh, yeah, so it's it's just not worth it, uh, you know, unless you really have someone who knows what the hell they're doing and 
know yeah, for sure. Yeah, because they, uh, right. Yeah, I would stay away from the border if you can help it, especially right now. Totally. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, you know what? Like, let's just stay on this side, man. Let's just stay on, you know, the El Paso side. Because this guy that I was going to tell you about. Or Even was, if you're like yeah. me and you're really good at karate. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's only so much you can do. I know. You know, if they have automatic weapons, you might be able to take down two of them with roundhouse kicks. <laughs> but that third guy, he just needs to fire once or twice. But what I always carry with me is a jump rope, and I let them know how many uh, turns I can do in a two-minute time period, and it really intimidates yeah. them. Like, <laughs> they're like, damn, this guy's fast. <laughs> He's making his rope into a shield. <laughs> the bullets are just going to bounce off. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like... Uh, but yeah, so I was I was looking forward to like driving around El Paso and vlogging it, but it didn't happen this trip, but I'll do it another time and it'll happen and it'll... It'll, and be, it'll uh, be great. It'll be muy bien. And I'm. What yeah. is your favorite Mexican food aside from canned tamales? What? Oh gosh. Um, I mean, I always go bean and cheese burrito, and I and I love a quesadilla. That's that's my go-to simple like. Now, know, what kind of quesadilla do you like? I usually just like a plain cheese quesadilla. I don't usually. I or, or sometimes I'll add chicken. So do you just put like cheese in a tortilla? Yes. Yep, and then or like the, like a mixture of cheeses, or like the yellow cheese, the orange cheese, the white cheese, and I like now a, uh, some walk on the side. You know, uh, there's a cheese uh, outfit called Tillamook. Are you familiar with them? Yes. Yeah. They do a thing called a four cheddar blend. Ooh. And that is a good time with a, a flour tortilla. Oh man. I think I've Hold done something like that before. That's really good. And then my you wife can microwave it for thirty seconds and then oh. put like some hot sauce just on the side. To, oh, to that sounds great. Dip it in. I wanna, uh, I'll give a shout out to my wife. I know she's listening. Shout out to wifey. She uh she she buys like different cheeses, blocks of cheese, and then we'll shred it up and then put it in a uh sandwich bag. So when I open the fridge, I'm like, What's there to eat? Oh wow, shredded cheese, perfect. And so it's really easy to like Make something on the go. It's like right there. I don't have to, you know. I'll tell you my uh, secret on uh, nachos. If you're making like microwave nachos. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Exactly. That's the, the you know, thicker, the shredded cheese, the better. Mm. A lot of people think use that real finely yeah. shredded where it's almost like little strings. Don't do that. Use a, the thicker, the better. You still want it shredded, but use like the thick cut. Because uh, it won't scorch as quickly. Oh yeah, and then um, and do it about ten seconds less in the microwave than you think you need to, and they'll come out much better. And as for the chips, any chips that have a lot of bubbles in them, oh, uh, yeah, uh, like they don't have to be super expensive. Find the like, look at all the different kinds. See which of these have the most like bubbles in the chip those are going to be the best uh chips for, for yeah, and i like them to be a little thicker so that way they don't break off you know what i mean like you get the chip that keeps yeah. breaking like, dang it if you want thicker uh tostitos does like a restaurant style uh cantina style they call it oh and those are thicker those are for like guacamole and that kind of stuff so good um, I got a news article I was going to read you. A Japanese man who rents himself out to do nothing for a living says he will reply to chit-chat, but that's about it. So apparently people are really lonely in Japan, and they have uh, they've even, in the, in the suicide rate, it, it says it's, Japan has recently struggled with managing loneliness and social, social isolation among residents. Mm -hmm. The country has reported rising suicide rates for the first time in 11 years and they quote um, appointed a minister of loneliness to help tackle the problem so this dude he's 38 years old i've always thought of myself as the minister of loneliness <laughs> yeah yeah hey, that sounds like a good name for a rock group <laughs> yeah minister of loneliness yeah so he his name is uh, i can't pronounce it but it's like shohi morimoto i believe he works mm -hmm. is a so-called quote do nothing rent a man it says people hire him just to join him act in activities like eating, shopping, going for walks. He said he do he'll, he doesn't do anything that takes too much effort. In fact, he'll do he'll reply to chit chat, but that's about it. He said he's also been paid just to sit with people while they drink coffee. Like just he said a lot of times mm -hmm. people will hire him 
when they uh, when they want to go to an event, but they don't want to go there alone. Like they're the type of person who doesn't want to see a movie by themselves, or you know, go to a restaurant by themselves, or something like that. But I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, imagine what they would pay for an American. <laughs> oh, I know, right? Hey, maybe we could go over things. there and you know take their jobs. No, we could go yeah. over there and like you know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm it, all for it. Yeah, we, I will do nothing in another country <laughs> just exactly. as well as I do it here. I know, right? I know. It's funny. I don't know if it's because, you know, it's hard to say, but I started stand-up when I was around 19, so uh, I kind of learned to, you know, like myself without sounding corny, but like, and also to be alone with myself, and uh, I'm actually okay with it, you know, like... You know, yeah, it, I don't mind it. You know what I mean? It dawned on me the first time I ever did the road. Like, that was when I was alone. I was away from friends, family, everybody, all by myself, on the road. I left Fresno. My gig was in Ventura. Yeah. And, uh, Real, yeah. Real shit. Real, yeah, I went from one shit town to another. <laughs> and uh, he was like, welcome to the road, boy. But, uh, in <laughs> fact, that gig, uh, a friend of mine had done it, like, two weeks prior. And and I remember at that time, I was, I was the MC. There was an MC. That was me. An opening act, <laughs> a middle act, and a headline. So there's four comics, but it was like, I was like the host. That was back when they used to have a four man lineup or whatever, four person lineup. Yeah. And uh, I remember like I bought a I bought a used car to get to the gig because I, at the time I was riding a motorcycle and I was like, oh, there's no way it'll make it over the mountain. And plus, you could only take the motorcycle up to around maybe like 50 miles an hour, then it would start shaking. Mm-hmm. And um, so I remember getting into town, and my buddy gave me this hot tip. He's like, when you get there. Um, find any phone book and go to the back of the phone book and there'll be coupons for the La Quinta Inn. So I remember <laughs> I, I went there, I found the La Quinta Inn coupons, got myself a room for three days. I was feeling really good. I'm excited about the show, my first adventure. And this is when the the lonely thought hit me or being alone. I remember I like, oh, because you know, especially when you're like, I was 20 and I remember being, oh, I'm going to go check out the jacuzzi, the hot tub. This is exciting. I don't have a hot tub. I've never been in a hot tub. This is so cool. So I go yeah. downstairs, I'm in the hot tub, I'm looking at the sunset and the palm trees, this beautiful view, Ventura, California, and I just realized, like, wow, I'm by myself, like, I'm totally alone, like, I'm in this hot tub by myself. And Yeah, that's, and, that's a yeah. weird feeling that happens to comedians a lot, where yeah. you're basically in paradise, but you're by yourself. Right, you know, and then, you know, as, 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 as time goes by, you sort of learn to like it, you're like, well, whatever, I'm by myself now, but, you know, it's okay. Is it? Is it okay? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah. I know you're like I'm like I love being alone. Anyways, hey Mike, you want to do a podcast? Uh, I'm in El Paso, in my hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've got 14 podcasts lined up this week. I'm just calling. I was thinking friends. later tonight we could do another podcast. We, you know, we could do a part two. We could talk about maybe uh, you know a podcast where we just sit and watch Dexter together. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, not Dexter. That sounds very macabre. Uh, <laughs> that would make you even lonelier, probably. I know. It's like, hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's funny, too. I made sure the room, uh, that's another thing you learn to do when you're alone. You learn to make sure, like, I'm like, well, I'm going to be here for four days. Let me make sure my hotel room has, like, some sort of view. Because I've been in rooms where, uh, you know, you, you open the window and it just faces, like, another wall. And it's like, it gets, like, an hour oh, of sunlight. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want that. And... In fact, this one, the first room they gave me was sort of like that. So I said, put me as close to the freeway as possible, you know, because I do like to see, like, at least there you could see, like, the sunset and traffic, you know, moving. And you could see something, you know. Yeah. I'm like, I do not like that where there's nothing. I remember one time I was at a hotel and, and the club owner, it was a perfect location, the hotel was. And then he changed hotels and the other hotel had nothing around there except, like, a Burger King. And I'm like, dude, this isn't. You know, it's like, oh, yeah. You know, and they don't understand because they, you know, they don't, they could care less. They're like, he's like, there's plenty right. of there's, there. He goes, I remember he goes, there's a Burger King in one corner and a McDonald's on the other, and I'm like, I don't want to, ha- you know. Well, and they're going home after their shift, so you know. Yeah, they're like tough, tough luck, pal. Different, different <laughs> priorities, you know. Yeah, different priorities. So, uh, you you've been in LA this week. Did you uh, did you do any spots? I did the comedy store on Saturday at uh, midnight, and that was uh, it was a lot of fun. It was the most of the crowd had gone by the time I got up, mm. but uh, I had fun with the people I had, and uh, 
they were in a, a real good mood. Usually the people that will hang on uh, are in a pretty good mood. Oh, yeah. You know, late, late night, you know. And and they let me go a little bit longer because it was like the last spot of the night. And it's like no one was in a rush to go up for, you know, right. four, yeah. four people or whatever, you know. And uh, But, yeah, it was fun. And then uh, Don Barris had finished his uh, stuff in the main room. And so he went up for a little bit and then we went to Norm's. Oh, and, cool. Uh, so that was fun. It's always, I like hanging out with comics after shows, uh, you know, uh, much more than like when we, neither of us have anything going on. Yeah. You know, it, it's always fun though to hang out after a performance. I cause love, everyone, yeah. Good, cause everything, good mood, yeah. You know? Good mood, good energy. You're thinking of things. Even if they too. bombed, it's still fun, <laughs> yeah. you know. Did, is the norms that you go to is uh, I got to go to that one. Is it the one on La Brea right, or La Cienega rather right up the street from uh, on the way to Melrose? I don't want to say because the autograph hounds. Oh yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and whatnot, you know, but no, yeah, it's the one on La Cienega. <laughs> yeah. That's right, folks. Next time Mike Black is at the comedy store, you might see him at norms afterward. <laughs> you might, so, but there's a good chance I'll be somewhere else. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that or a uh, Panda Express at you know one forty five a.m. But yeah, there are a few different spots that I'll go to like after a performance that are just good places to eat. But you can also hang out. Right now, it's not ideal, of course. But when you go to Norms, what yeah. do you what's it, what do you recommend people get? They have so much stuff that it's really hard to say. They but late night they do a bunch of different steak and egg specials. Mm. And that's almost always a good thing to to go for. Uh, they do a decent steak. Uh, they're they specialize in breakfast stuff, so everything else is going to be pretty good. But here's the trick. Yeah. What what bread would you order with something like that? With steak and eggs. Um, yeah, I would if order. Pancakes are on the table. Waffles. Hmm. All that stuff. What do you go for? If I was to have steak and eggs, I would say I would probably I would probably get um, man oh I'd probably get English muffin, English muffin, plain yeah. and hard smart. That's a good solid choice. Yeah, that way the little nooks and crannies, it's delicious. I'd Here's what I do. Yeah, as an expert, <laughs> <laughs> I go. I don't want any of those other options. Bring me a slice of that uh, seasoned garlic toast that you uh, serve with pasta. And they go uh, right away. And it's any time I've been in a group and I say that, everyone goes, oh, I want that instead <laughs> of, of whatever bullshit I said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's good. Hey, you know, uh, Have you ever had the cheesy garlic bread at the smokehouse? It's the same thing. Oh, it's so good. You've it's had it the exact. Oh, yeah. really? Is that what Norm's has? That same sort of like... Cheese. Yeah, it's oh, like wow. Texas toast kind of. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. Wow. Yep, that's exactly what it is. Mm. And uh, what I do is I often will uh, scoop out the doughy, uh, un untoasted side, get that out of there. Wow. And fill it with my eggs and hash browns. Oh, and, man. And eat it that way. Dude, that sounds great. Like a real champ. Like a real champ, I know. I um, I was smart. I actually went to Jimmy John's and uh, used the refrigerator in the room, so I was able to. The last couple nights, I'm like, okay, I don't need to, you know. I can everything can close. Oh, if you have a fridge I, in your room. Yeah. They're, they're all set. Yeah, exactly. You're like, I'm good. I don't need any any ride anywhere or worry if something's closed or not. But um, you can just get a bunch of cold cuts and live like a king. That's right. Well, I'm I'm looking. <laughs> Oh man, I'm looking forward to getting back to LA. I, I I've been filming all my shows here. That's something I've been, I've done. You know, I've learned from the pandemic is if we can, let's try to document our our performances. If you know, video, yeah. audio, somehow, and become a better comedian, but also have little clips that we can get out there. You know, to the world. It's you know, it's uh, yeah. You know, well, and and uh, California uh, is clearly suffering a loss from you not being here crime has gone up <laughs> homelessness has gone yeah. up well, more uh, suicides oh, it's, gosh. it's really getting bad 
Yeah, well, I'll, I'll so, be I back. Mean, have fun on the road, but we need <laughs> yeah, you back here to start as that soon party. as possible. Yeah. I know, man. I miss California already. I, I I can't wait to come home and see everybody and and uh, work on these clips this week and get something out there for you guys. But um, Mike, I want to say thank you for taking this call and uh, being on the Pocket Party Podcast once again. If we were to Anytime. name, you know, if if we were to do a, you know, I sometimes like doing the things that make me happy this week, and I I want to say uh, I'm happy to have a friend like you to call. I'm happy to, you know, have the work. It was great to have work, and I I'm happy that my my uh, my YouTube family is uh you know involved on on my YouTube channel and and you know watching my videos and leaving comments and stuff. And it's I I just want to say thank you guys for all of that and. Uh, yeah, anything else? I'm happy for my family. I love my family. What are you happy about, Mike? I'm happy that you have a friend like me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. For you, I'm I'm very happy for you on that. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> I'm happy I found a really good chips and salsa combo. Mm. Uh, they do Tostitos does a chunky habanero salsa which I uh, enjoy. Wow. And they also do uh, Salsa Verde Tostitos chips. Put those two together if you're feeling adventurous because they're very spicy. Yeah, that sounds uh, really... Have you ever had something so spicy you just start coughing and you're like, oh my, it gets stuck in the back of your throat? I got to be careful about that. Yeah, you got to fight through it on this. Mm, but it's and, good. Uh, but it's, it's delicious. And it's a little bit slightly healthier than nachos. And uh, I'm thankful for my folks. I got to talk to them uh, this weekend. They're doing good. And, uh, By the way, I had a comment. Somebody said, uh, shout out to your mom, because they know that she listens sometimes. And, oh, and, uh, that's nice. And I thought that was really interesting when you told some stories about your mom and you guys going out to eat. And she's like, uh, go ahead, honey, you start first. Because <laughs> she, yeah. she knows you get a little... Uh, hey, isn't your mom a, 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 an Elvis Presley fan also? Massive Elvis Presley. Fan. Oh, man. I love that. Yeah. Huge. In fact, this this year I got her a uh, for the holidays. I got her a uh, little like sterling silver uh, pendant uh, that just had the TCB logo wow. on it, and uh, she really enjoyed that. So taking care of business in a flash. <laughs> I love that man. I love it. Have you got Have you got a chance to go to Graceland? Uh, no, I haven't. I. Have, there's two things I want to do Elvis related. I would like to go to Graceland and I would like to get a fool's gold sandwich in, in Denver from the guy that used to make them for Elvis. Fool's gold sandwich. Is that the peanut butter banana? Uh, no, that's the one his mom. Made, oh, know, the fried peanut butter and banana sandwich. The fool's gold is a full loaf of Italian bread hollowed out with a jar of peanut butter in one side, oh a jar of either plum or grape jam in the other side, and 12 really crisp strips of bacon in there. You close it, frost the entire outside with butter, mm. and then uh, cook it, you know, for like about 20 minutes, and then you eat it. And this guy was world famous for making them. There was a restaurant up in the mountains uh, that you could get them at. The The TCB-1 flew to uh, Stapleton Airport, Denver International Airport at that time, and never left the tarmac. He sent guys from the Memphis Mafia up into the mountains to get the sandwiches. <laughs> they brought the sandwiches back to the plane, and they took off to their next gig. And he loved them so much that he personally paid a visit to the place then, made friends with this kid, gave him a ring, uh, and came back and saw him a bunch of other times and would always give him, like, over tip and give him gifts and wow. stuff like that because he just loved the sandwiches there. Man. And so now the guy owns his own place in Denver, and it's a restaurant slash Elvis museum. And he'll, the guy likes to tell stories about it, but there's, like, all sorts of... Elvis memorabilia there too. That's so cool, man. I, I love Elvis stories and I love Elvis's m music and I love his uh, the stories about his generosity. You know. Oh yeah. It, it's funny. I was just I was listening to some stories about um you know 
entertainers of an older generation who grew up kind of poor in the 20s and 30s, and they thought maybe their their money would they'd run out. So, you know, um, I heard a story that Groucho Marx used to carry a tomato with him, so he'd always <laughs> at least have something. Like like if if he never had anything to eat, he'd at least have some sort of you know juice, something to you know he could drink the tomato juice, he could eat the tomato, he could have something, and uh, you know that's. Uh, it reminds me of my grandparents because they grew up in the depression. I remember they'd, you'd open up the drawer and you'd see like packets of like, you know, salt, pepper, mustard, you know, just different things. You'd, you'd get condiments. You'd find at a restaurant, you know, yeah. Burger King straws or whatever, you know. Yeah, I it's, you know, they were called the greatest generation. And that was a big part of it was their ability to conserve things and make the most out of what they had, you know, feed six people with a potato and that sort of stuff. Yeah. And it's funny. It's like as, as bad as things are now, I think the millennials might end up being an even greater generation, you know, because like right now they have a device, the size of a deck of cards that contains all of mankind's knowledge up to this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they could use it at any time. To, to access that and cure cancer or fight, you know, all right. sorts of lofty things. For the most part, they're taking pictures of their butt and sending them to each other and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But, but the, if yeah. things go real bad, if things go like road warrior bad, those same people will go from having absolutely everything to having absolutely nothing. And it'll be like, uh, yeah, one, one year I had everything I wanted at my fingertips, literally. The next year, I learned to feed eight people with one rat. <laughs> you know? Oh, gosh. Yeah. They're going to be the most interesting people that ever lived. You know? I know. And just the way that they can, because I look at my son, you know, 14 years old, and the things that he, you know, he's able to do with his mind. And I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's natural or if it's, you know, trained because of my wife and like his, you know, we got him into Taekwondo early on. And so he mm -hmm. learned like patterns and how to memorize things and worked his way out. And, and I don't know if I ever told you this, but, um, you know, uh, with pi, like 3.14, the mathematical mm -hmm. equation, they, um, yeah. they did a, they had a contest at his school in March of 2020. And so pi day is, you know, March 14th, 3.14. And they said, if you can right. memorize 20 digits of pi, uh, you, there's an opportunity to throw a pi in your, t in your teacher's face. And uh -huh. so, so that day, my son memorized 52 digits of pi <laughs> and he just kept working and working and he got up over 400. And then we were like, okay, enough for you. You've, you know, you, and by the way, there's yeah. a, I put that on my YouTube channel. You'll see it. If you look up Darren Carter, pi Austin, whatever it might, you know, something like that. I, I forget the keywords, but in fact, some kid yesterday uh, left a comment and they were like, wow, I did 200, but 400, that's incredible. And, and I, you know, yeah. I, I told him, I, I commented back to the little girl. I said, you know, I, I'm only able to do 10. I don't know how you guys do it. You know, I remember someone said their that their password on their computer, they had made it like the first 50 numbers of pi. Oh, was that my son? Did I tell you that story about he, cause he did that with his iPhone oh, okay. or iPad. Yeah, he, he yeah. I, I don't remember the exact details. My wife will probably tell me, but he, I remember it was a whole bunch of numbers and then you have to do it quickly. That's the thing. You, you can't just. Right. So you have a time limit. And so he wasn't able to, and it was like scary. And then it was down to the point where it was like, if you don't do it this time, you're getting locked out. And it was like, oh my God. But luckily he did it. And he's like, well, I'll never do that again. You know, like. There's, yeah. But you know. what sucks is if it locks you out, then it erases all your data. <laughs> you know? I know. Gosh. We were like, don't do that again, buddy. Like. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Uh, Use your math for good instead of evil. <laughs> Exactly. Use your mind for good, boy. I know. Well, Mike, <laughs> Mike, thank you so much, man. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll let you run, and, and thanks for sharing part of your your day with me. And uh, oh, you too, buddy. And we'll we'll get together this this week, okay? And I'll uh, I'll call you in a little bit after I end this podcast. I'll make sure that everything saves on my computer, and I'll I'll call. I'll, I'm gonna give you a call in about three to five minutes. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> you got it. Okay, buddy. All right. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Mike Black, everybody. How great is he? Uh, once again, guys, thank you for listening to the Pocket Party Podcast. If you want to help out and, uh, you know, financially, if you want to hit me up with that, uh, the, I'm on the Cash App, dollar sign Darren Carter comic. I'm on 
uh, Venmo at Darren Carter Comic. You don't have to. Just think of it as like a tip jar. But if you don't, if you don't want to, if you don't have to, that is okay. You can also help for free by telling a friend about the podcast and by leaving comments on my YouTube videos. It does help that algorithm. And uh, while you're at it, why not share a couple of videos? That'll help as well. You guys are great. Thanks for letting us be the friends in your pocket. And uh, what can I say? As my boxing coach says, don't hurt nobody. Don't hurt nobody. Be careful. Be careful. Don't hurt nobody, including yourself. Darren Carter, party starter. I'm out. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Bye. Everybody listen to Darren Carter. We all know he's the party starter. So if you want to listen to a podcast for free, then listen to the Pocket Party.